Hello everyone, welcome back to Forged in Lego. And today I finally have another capital ship build. This time it's the Munificent Class Star Frigate. And this is in scale with the UCS Venator. I'll show you a comparison at the end, but I'll also compare it to my other capital ships, which are at a much smaller scale. This has a full interior too, and you guys have been asking for it a lot. I do have instructions. Check them out at the link in the description if you want to build this yourself. Now this ship was seen in almost every battle in the Clone Wars, and has even been used as a flagship by both Count Dooku, General Grievous, and even Cad Bane. Now this one is based off of the version we see in Revenge of the Sith, which has the much more interesting details and more greebling on the top of it. So let's go in for a closer look. Up here at the front, we can see one of my favorite details, which is this brick-built Separatist symbol, which is made out of these little 2x2 two two wedge plates, just arranged so that they uh, form that shape. And you can also see a bunch of a detail in here with like these robot arms and antennas and all that good stuff. And over at the back, we've got more greebling, more of these uh, wedge tiles used as detailing. And check out this gear right here. We'll show you what this does later on. And bringing you down a little lower, you can see a lot of the greebling I put down here. Back here, we can get a better view of the engines. You can see there are three main ones and four secondary engines back there. And back up here at the front, we can see the main gun, which can go side to side. And up and down a little bit. So how sturdy is this model? Is it swooshable? Well, let's find out. I usually pick it up right here, which is a pretty sturdy area to hold the model and it's very well balanced. But you can uh, swoosh it around, but be careful about this wing section because it's only attached with a couple of studs so that it can be removed. And it can flop around a little bit if the studs come undone. Uh, you can probably hear some pieces jangling around. Those are the battle droids that are flopping around in the interior. But overall, very swooshable. A lot more swooshable than the uh, UCS Venator. Or really any of my other capital ship builds. So now, finally, how does this model open up? First, you open up these panels, next these panels, next you grab this section right here, lift up and back, and then you take off the wing. And then finally, we can open these two panels to reveal the interior. Now, unfortunately, the design of this ship in a universe is very skeletal, so there's very little interior space. And that means all the battle droids have to have their heads folded down when the ship's folded up. Back here, we've got the deck guns that we see in some episodes of The Clone Wars and on the Invisible Hand in Episode 3. Now, the bridge has three chairs, two for some pilot battle droids and one for the commander. And this seat is actually made for a regular minifig to sit in there, but a commander battle droid will also fit pretty well. He's the guy you heard uh, flopping around during the uh, stability test. And if you look up at the front of the bridge, you'll see that there's an actual window to outside. So you can see the emptiness of space. And if you're wondering if that 
takes away from the exterior look of the ship. It's really buried down in there, so you can only see it at a certain angle. And it's, uh, once the interior is closed up, no lights coming through, so it just looks like a regular piece of the detailing. And now we're back at the front of the ship, and I'm putting a lot of light down in there, but really it's hard to see that it's a window and not just more detailing. But coming up back up to the interior, you can notice that security battle droid is kind of standing in a pit right now. Now that's actually an elevator, which uses the same mechanism that my invisible hand used. So once you twist the knob on the outside, the platform slowly raises. And if you keep spinning, it goes back down. This entire middle section of the ship is actually a hollow hallway so that your battle droids can go down to the end of the ship. And what is over there? Well, over here is the hangar bay. It's not a very big one, but the Munificent definitely does have a hangar. So if you use this gear I showed earlier in the video, the hangar doors open. And with everything closed up, Opening the hangar bay doors looks like this. So what can you fit in the hangar bay? I've currently built three ships so far that are the right scale to fit in there. First is the same Jedi Interceptor that I used in the Invisible Hand. Second is this Separatist Sheathapede Shuttle. And this can actually fit a minifig inside. So if you open up the doors on the back and get a minifig like this 501st Trooper, bend his legs, and shove him headfirst into there, he just barely fits. And finally we have my latest version of the vulture droid. This is a little bit smaller than the one I showed in the invisible hand and it doesn't use the uh, ball joints which are really getting in the way when I was uh, trying to use it. But this can still go into walking mode. It's just much easier to work with than with all the ball joints especially at this small scale. Let's start out with the Jedi Interceptor. It just barely fits in there. And you have to uh, turn it so that the wings face forward for in order for it to even kind of fit in there. Yeah, I might have to need might have to do an update on this one. The Vulture Droid is the easiest because it's pretty small and of course doesn't fit a minifig so fits in there easily and then the sheathapede you have to fold this fin down but then it fits in easily just like that now you may be thinking, well hang on, the vulture droids on the Munificent don't go on a hangar, they go under the armor. And don't worry, I thought about that too. What we're going to do is go underneath the armor right here, expose this Technic pin, and dock our vulture droid. So now he is ready to be deployed from under the armor. And now that we're done with the overview of the ship itself, let's get into some comparisons. So let's start off small with the most recent Star Destroyer. And as you can see, it's not even close. 
Next up, we've got Moff Gideon's light cruiser that I modified into a Republic Architens. And as you can see, the Architens is supposed to be a much smaller ship, so it's in a different scale. And here we have it with the mock that started it all. My Venator Star Destroyer with the full interior. And here you can see just how much I'm trying to progress as a builder. And I want to continue that by building more capital ships. So let me know what I should build next. I'm conflicted between a uh, Acclimator, a Recusant, and doing a full interior on the UCS Venator. And now we have the Munificent versus the other Separatist capital ship I built, the Invisible Hand. And again, here you can see more progression in terms of the detailing I'm able to do from my old build to this brand new one. Apologies if it's hard to see all of this. These ships are just way too big for my uh, filming setup. But here is the current Separatist fleet. So now, finally, let's get to the comparison you've all been waiting for. The Munificent versus the UCS Venator Class Star Destroyer. And here we are with the comparison you've all been waiting for. And I think these two builds are pretty on par in terms of uh, what details they have. But these ships are perfectly in scale with each other. And as you can see, the Venator is much bigger, but not by that much. Let me see if I can not get a better angle on this. Again, apologies. I just, I don't have space to film all these in a, together. They're just so huge. And subscribe so you can see the rest of the capital ships I'm building coming up. I'm thinking I'll start with the Acclimator. We'll see once the uh, MIDI scale one comes out. Of course, let me know what you think down in the comments, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.